if you sell to one person and that one person decides he doesn't want your product anymore or as much of your product, you are at the mercy of what that person wants you to do. We're going to be forced to sell to somebody that already has enough. Jason Reinholtz is a motorhand living in Edmonton, Alberta, and one of thousands of oil rig workers who are currently out of a job. It is what it is, man. <laughs> These blue ones are the uh, winner. Coveralls are just a little bit, bit thicker. Warmer. Yeah, but that smells. You pretty much don't know if you're shutting down until the day that it's actually happening. And everyone's in panic mode, think, not knowing what they're going to do after. It sucks. <laughs> My hard hat. There's a lot of uh, personality on this hat. Yeah. When you're shutting down, everyone's kind of quiet and thinking about what they're going to do after and thinking about how they're going to pay bills. And there's a, hundreds of guys sitting around, not doing anything, waiting for the call. Canada's oil men are feeling something of a boom time hangover. We visited Alberta in what is normally high season for drilling, just before the frozen ground thaws. This time last year, there were about 100 oil rigs operating in this area in Fox Creek, Alberta. Right now, the rig count is down to about 35. The rest of the rigs are in yards like this. They're called laydown yards. Right here behind me is a derrick. When it's standing, Spotting the skyline around here normally, it's about 100 feet tall. With the price of oil being down, companies aren't sure when they can actually be out there making a profit drilling for oil. The price of oil has dropped again to the lowest levels in more than five years. In late 2014, the price of oil tanked, along with Alberta's economy. This is the most significant public uh, financial circumstance that we have seen in this province in a generation. Crude oil is Canada's number one export, and 99% of that oil is sold to the United States. That's like having one customer for your product, which any economist will tell you is a bad idea. In recent years, the United States has emerged as a major producer of oil in its own right, following a revolution in controversial fracking technology. That amped up production in the U.S. has contributed to a global oversupply of oil, which is also bad news for Canada. It's caused some frustration, I think, for other oil producers um, that maybe did not anticipate that the United States was going to emerge as this global producer. Canada has one market for its oil, and that is the United States. I think it really is about finding ways out of Canada to meet other markets. Until recently, Canada's best prospects for meeting other markets was through the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. But it was vetoed by President Obama in February, after it became a symbol of all that is wrong with Canada's infamous tar sands. I think partially you had a strong and effective environmental movement that was really able to sort of draw attention to oil coming out of Alberta that is considered to be dirtier, that is considered to be much more sort of carbon intensive than traditional oil. What many people don't realize is that there is a Keystone pipeline that is just to the west of the proposed Keystone XL that does bring oil down from Canada via pipeline. Along with the railways, that other Keystone pipeline is just one of many already transporting three million barrels a day from Canada to the United States. Other proposals are now in the works to pipe all that Canadian oil east and west to Atlantic and Pacific ports in hopes of reaching new markets in Asia and Europe. If in the next year, two years, U.S. production, as many people believe, continues to increase and increase, if Canada doesn't have alternative markets in place by then, then it's, it's not necessarily a good position to be in. 
The United States is a stable market, but it's a decreasing market. So Canada needs to look at this as an opportunity to say, how do we position our industry to succeed once we recover? I mean, right now we should be very busy. In January, we should be seeing our fleet at about 70% utilization. In January, we were hovering on 45%. So on the direct side, we'd be looking at about 4,000 of our employees. But when you look at all the other services that are responsible for bringing a well up to production and are associated with oil and gas activity in Western Canada, that number is about 23,000. So there's a lot of people that are going to be impacted by this. Drill rig count is a pretty reliable weather vane for the economy in Alberta. This time last year, the count was 282. Today, it's 99. That's a 64% drop in activity and the lowest rig count in over 20 years. While drilling is ground to a halt, production at existing wells continues, which seems odd given that demand is down and profit margins are slimming by the day. We met up with the CEO of a small oil and gas company who is keeping the pump jacks going despite the pain of low oil prices. As the price fell, it was a bit like catching a falling knife. We plan to drill about um, between five and six wells in the first half of the year. That was our, our budget was $20 million and, and drill five or six wells. Now we're doing zero. How significant is the dent in, in your pocketbook right now? Oh, it's dramatic. We were expecting this year to be uh, about 5,000 barrels a day for the whole year, and we were expecting somewhere between 80 and 100 million dollars. So now we, we know that number is going to be more like 30. So less than half of what we were originally expecting. And that's compounded because we're not going to drill any wells, so we won't maintain that 5,000 barrels a day. I am at the one of 20 battery where Tangle Creek produces about 1,800 barrels a day. And uh, this is a PPE suit you have to wear. It's flame retardant. And uh, luckily it fits over my parka because it is cold out there. Jason Labarski is a field operator for Tangle Creek and oversees the continued production of oil at one of Glenn's batteries in spite of the fact that the oil produced here isn't fetching the profits they're used to. If you sell to one person and that one person decides he doesn't want your product anymore or as much of your product, uh, you are at the mercy of what that person wants you to do. We're going to be forced to sell to somebody that already has enough and that forces pricing even lower. So why would wells still be in production when the price of oil is down? because we still have to pay bills. The first quarter of 2015 has shown that low oil prices have had a significant negative impact on the Canadian economy. As the value of Canada's biggest export plummeted, the country reported a record low balance of trade with a $3 billion deficit. On top of that, federal and provincial budgets are forecasting losses to the tune of $14 billion. As the energy sector reels and adjusts, another potentially more significant sea change has occurred at the political level, adding even more uncertainty to its future. The change has finally come to Alberta. Canada's conservative heartland is now led by the left-leaning NDP. Premier Rachel Notley has sent reassuring messages to the sector following the election, saying it would be A-OK -okay under her leadership. At the same time, her campaign promised to withdraw the Keystone XL pipeline bid, raise royalties on oil and gas companies, and negotiate new climate policies. That is, for Alberta, there may be a new AOK -OK on the horizon.